Now, I want to bring in Republican Representative Connie Mack. He's put forward a plan that he says would, and I quote, cut up the government's credit card. And he joins me now from Capitol Hill. Uh, Congressman, explain your plan, please. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, and, you know, everyone right, now is, everyone right now is looking for uh, that plan. And I've got one that I think people on both sides of the aisle not only can understand but can like. And what it does is simple. Uh, we would cut 1% of spending a year for six years. So that's only one penny out of every federal dollar. It's up to the Congress to dis define where that 1% comes from. But if the Congress fails and the president fails and they can't work together, uh, then it would be an across-the-board cut. Uh, after six years, we capped spending at 18% of GDP. In the seventh year, we balanced the budget. And after 10 years, you cut $7.5 trillion. One of the things that people need to understand, when Washington talks about a cut, what they're not talking about is every year there's a projected 7.5% increase in spending. So what we need to do, if the president is serious, what we need to do is a plan that cuts spending. And taking one penny out of every federal dollar uh, is something that everyone who's watching your show has had to do at home, has had to do in their business, and in fact, they've had to do much more than that. And they're looking at us and saying, why, why can't you do that? Why can't you do something as simple as one penny out of every federal dollar? Senator John McCain says that you're a hobbit. How, how do you react to that charge? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to respond to uh, Senator McCain. I think the senator is, uh, you know, I, I, hopefully we're all on the same team. Republicans, Democrats, we're all fighting for America. Uh, and if the, Senate, if the senator wants to make those kind of comments about me or anybody else, that's his business. I'm here to talk to you and your audience about how we can balance the budget, how we can do it in a, a responsible way by taking one penny out of every federal dollar to balance the budget in eight years and cut $7.5 trillion. But, but the reason the senator said that about guys like you is that he believes you are being deliberately obstructive to the process of getting a deal here and the intransigence of Republicans who simply won't allow a debt ceiling increase, won't allow any tax increases, don't want any revenue from anywhere by the look of it. That it's that intransigence is what's causing the problem. And until you stop being so intransigent, there can't be a deal. Some of us believe we need to continue to stand on principle and fight for what we believe in. And that's what I'm doing. Let me, let me say this. Uh, right now, we spend roughly 1.5 trillion more than we bring in every year. Uh, earlier, your guest earlier talked about debt to income or debt to revenue ratio. We will, if we raise the debt ceiling, we'll be at 17 trillion dollars of debt within two years. 17 trillion based upon income of about 2 trillion. No one, if that was an individual, no one with that kind of record would be able to get a credit card. Yet somehow we think that the federal government can keep doing this. So yeah, I'm going to continue to fight for a balanced budget. I'm going to continue to fight to get the fiscal house in order. I'm going to continue to stand up on principle and say, look, if we want to reach a deal, it's got to it's got to be based on the fact of balancing our budget. Now, if, if uh, others want to call that out of line, so be it. I happen to think it's responsible in what the American people are demanding of their members of Congress and their senators. But, but the problem with what you're saying is that, as the president's made very clear, this is not about future spending. It's about paying money that America has already spent. Well, let, let me just say this. I don't think the president has much uh, a, a leg to stand on in this. He hasn't put forward a plan. He's put up good speeches and he's talked about things, but there's nothing for us to look at to compare. So Pierce, it's almost like if my wife and I went to the car dealership, sat uh, next to each other, agreed on the make of car, agreed on the terms, the price, uh, the color, the kind of car, uh, but there was nobody on the other side to negotiate with. And that's what we have here. We keep, the Republicans continue to put up plans, continue to put out ideas, uh, the president has yet to come forward with, a, with an idea or a plan that anybody can look at and determine whether or not it's good for America. But, but in that situation, uh, the, the domestic one that you just painted for me so eloquently, I mean, you'd find a car. You wouldn't get divorced, would you? No, but you would probably go to a car dealership where there's somebody willing to sit on the other side with you. Uh, right now, there's no one at the table. The table on the other side is empty. 
There's nobody over there saying, here, in writing, is what the terms are going to be. Here's what we can do. The president hasn't come forward with a plan. He has said no to a lot of things. In fact, he has said no to just about everything. Uh, but he has not put a plan out of his own. Congressman, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.